I want to walk through a notebook on various explainability methodologies for transformers. If you need a little background, I've made separate videos that explain why we care about explanations, how we calculate Shapley explanations. Today, what I want to do is show you for transformer-based models, text classification, three different packages that we can use to help us explain these models. I'm going to go through this notebook in real time. There's parts where it takes a little bit of computation, so I might speed up the video in those cases. But let's walk through this. I'll add a little bit of color to this so you get more than just kind of what's inside the notebook. You can find the notebook. It's a collab notebook over at bit.ly raj underscore explain. I've already went ahead and connected this up and installed the packages that we need. So let's get going on this. The first thing is I wanted to use a kind of a generic off the a generic model. I picked the model that I've often used is movie review data where we want to identify is this a positive or negative movie for a movie review. So you can see here we're going to grab the data. I have a little snippet here that runs that just I'm going to create just a small list here that just has a subset of the data set with the text truncated because we don't want to deal with something that's pages long in these explanation methods. I'm trying to teach you here. It's a lot easier if it's a shorter text, runs a lot quicker, gives you those insights. I'm grabbing kind of the transformer based models. Kind of one of my colleagues has built these models already, so I'm starting from a model that's already been built. If you need to do that, there's plenty of other resources on that, but our goal today is to explain predictions. So when I run this model, for example, I'm going to run that first example from the short data through it, and then, hey, I'm getting a negative prediction. Why am I getting this negative prediction? What is it about the words in this? The first approach we're going to use is SHAP. For those of you not familiar with SHAP, SHAP is probably the most widely used package for explanations. It uses a methodology built by Scott Lundberg based on Shapley values, which is a well-known method around cooperative game theory for figuring out or attributing, in this case, variables or features to a prediction. Plenty of more background about Shap. I'm going to put that aside. When we calculate Shap values here for text classification, any text that's long, you know, longer than, let's say, like seven or eight words, something in that ballpark, the explainer that Shap uses is called a partition explainer. And we'll spend a little bit of time talking about that method here. I'm going to go ahead and run that. But Shapley values are very computationally expensive to compute if you want the exact ones. So a lot of these methods will take approximations. One of the approximation is this partition explainer. There's plenty of links here to other articles, other documentation about this. But what it's going to do is essentially do some hierarchical clustering of ours and create, create the clusters or treat the clusters of the words as kind of similar or correlated to each other and that they would have kind of similar values. And what this does is it just reduces the computation that we have to do, makes it so we can kind of do it very, well, a little faster. You can see even for this one explanation here, it's taking, and we're over a minute already before it does. So it's kind of two minutes of explanation. You can think about, you know, if you have to scale this across thousands or millions, you might want to consider another type of methodology or maybe kind of ask yourself, why exactly do you need that many explanations for this? We'll talk about why we use explanations as we go through this. All right, the explanations have run. And as a reminder, when you're working with these notebooks, you should create, add additional cells. Take a look and take apart all these pieces of information that I'm putting here. I've just framed this notebook out to have kind of the basics of everything that you need to know, but the idea is you would kind of play around with this a little bit more. So once we've calculated the SHAP values, the next thing we can do is visualize them. 
And the great thing about the Shap package, it has this beautiful visualization already built in. I think this is one of the reasons that people like the Shap package. So what is this visualization telling us? In this case, the, the text here, we can see the text here written, was a negative review was how it was predicted. So the explanation helps us understand kind of what were the words that kind of pushed this to a negative um, review, which were the words that pushed it to maybe, you know, kept it from being a super negative review. Now, if we take a look at this, we'll see kind of the prediction over here, and we'll see what words kind of pushed or what features kind of pushed the prediction one way or another. Now, we'll see most of these predictions were pushed towards the negative here. This is kind of set to be the negative, where words like silly, cheap cardboard sets, stilted, right, doesn't match painfully, all of these elicited and were part of the responsible for why this was seen as negative. There was a little bit of countervailing things like, hey, I love sci-fi, right, and willing to put up a lot, you know, too good. It saw some of that. But in this case, the prediction still came out negative because of this. So hopefully this helps you understand when you have a big chunk of text like this, like what exactly in the text um, led to this. Now, the Shapley values underneath are just kind of, you can think of them as, as kind of values or numbers or coefficients associated with each feature. We can use and manipulate them in different ways. So one thing is, instead of that other visualization, we can just simply create a bar plot of them where we can see, hey, what are the biggest factors on either side here um, as well? That's the basics. Let's dive a little deeper into SHAP. All right, it took a couple minutes to run. I should have given you my TikTok channel in the meantime so you could have had something to do while that was running. Hopefully you made the best of it. All right, so now what we can do is we've done multiple ones. We can visualize multiple ones using the SHAP package. It's nice that it easily supports that as well. But a key is, is we can also aggregate the explanations to see what words show up the most across the explanations. So you can think here, if you have 10, 20, 100, what you can do is see what are the words that are the most common that you see most often across, across different types of um, examples where the words are the most influential for the predictions. And one thing I changed here, you can see, is I changed the max display here. That's what allows me to see a lot more examples here as well. So use these to kind of play around with it as well. A couple other things diving deeper is, and we're going to do this by using a shortened phrase than we had before, simply because this allows us to get a better insight into, um, into what's going on here. And you'll see the partition explainer here runs a lot quicker here when we have less words, right? There's less calculations it has to make. And I have a simple little phrase here, right? I love sci-fi, I eat a lot. Um, do you? Uh, we can see kind of the feature names here. These are the features that SHAP is evaluating for the explanations. Now, what this um, partition explainer does is it actually creates a hierarchical clustering. And one of the things I like to do just to give you the intuition of this hierarchical clustering is you can see what the clustering looks like here. And again, the way it's using this hierarchical clustering is it doesn't have to kind of go ahead and compute every possible feature. It can kind of group the features together in a way. Links to kind of the articles here. Um, I, I think up here I, I put the articles. Ah. I put the articles such that explain this as well. All right, so go check that out. Next, I want to move to Transformer Interrupt. I really like this package mainly because it's really been designed to work well with Hugging Face Transformers. On the back end for how it actually does is compute, it goes from the great package, Captum, which is an interpretability package built for PyTorch, and it's pulling out some of those pieces to actually do the math and the calculations here to use. The technique here will be integrated gradients. Um, it's a very simple, clean interface here. You can see, I just tell it, I want the sequence classification explainer, give it the model and tokenization. Now, when it calculates, when it uses these integrated gradients method, 
the method here is actually much quicker than the SHAP explainer. And this is one of the reasons I like this is it gives it very quickly. If you want to understand how integrated gradients works, there is a great tutorial here that I've linked. Kind of the intuition of integrated gradients is it compares the example that we have to a baseline. A baseline is probably like all, all ones or all zeros. And what it's trying to do is understand what are the features that are being used to go from that baseline to the prediction that we're making and where which features are changing the most. You can almost think of it as like kind of like coefficients for each of the features. It's able to calculate that with some kind of great math and path integrals, all this stuff very quickly. You can see it took 36 seconds for it to get that. Now, this is a different method than we used before. Different methods might end up explaining things a little bit differently. So you have to be cool with that. Now, when we run the visualize here, we can take a look. We can see again, right, this was predicted negative, And we can, again, see kind of which of the words led to kind of the negative prediction versus which led to the positive prediction as well. So another way to kind of explain um, this. If we, one of the things we can do with the integrated gradients is we can look at the word attribution. So I can look at every single term that showed up and exactly how much kind of was attributed to each of those terms. So, right, you could do, once you can kind of break it down like this, I'm sure the data scientists are starting to see, right, all different ways you can calculate it and see it. And for example, I took this, made a simple little plot where I said, hey, let me take, you know, the top 20 highest, top 20 lowest, and just plot those out so I can get a sense of, right, the cheap and painfully kind of words on one end, while words like love and I and ones on the others, pushing sentiments in different directions as well. Now, you might be at this point thinking, like, oh, two explanation methods, Rods, like, hey, help me out here, you know, can you help a brother out on this? Well, this is where Ferret Explainable AI Package comes into play. This is a package that's been built for benchmarking interpretability techniques. What it does is it actually contains many different interpretability techniques and then compares them, for, and then you can run a comparison across them. So let's go ahead and kind of play around with this. So this is a newer package too, came out very recently. I noticed I found like a one bug in it. So if something like that happens, don't panic. I'm using the tutorial that they have here. So that's why it's gonna take a second because we're gonna load in these Roberto models. We're not gonna do the movie reviews that we did earlier. Hopefully they'll fix the bugs and then I can go ahead and change this notebook up and do other things. I should also point out the notebook so far is built for text classification. There's lots of other cool transformer use cases. I think next I wanna tr tackle um, question answer models and do explanations around that. So look for that and this notebook to kind of be updated on a living basis as I get to explore that. All right, we've grabbed the model, we've grabbed the new tokenizer. Let's go ahead and let's explain the predictions here. The explanations here ran very quickly because we used a very short sentence. If we had something much longer, it's going to take a longer. So be prepared. Now, the methods it has inside here include, and you can see in the table here, um, gradients, integrated gradients, partition shap, and lime as well. And this nice table here lets you go, and let's see if I can zoom in a little, lets you look and compare how these different explanation methods do on your chunk of text. To keep this visualization simple, I just used a kind of a few words here, but as you can imagine, if this gets longer, it's gonna be a little bit more to kind of process. But this is a nice kind of useful tool to help you understand that different explanation methodologies are gonna be different. So you're gonna to want to evaluate these methodologies to see what works best. Now, within this package, they have tools here to help you evaluate, and there's some kind of different measures you can have Tell you the truth, I'm still new to this stuff and learning these pieces and these measures. But my advice to people when you're working with these explanations is remember, text explanations are very difficult. 
there's very little signal here for kind of looking at this. You have lots and lots of features, tens, hundreds of features. Each of them are interacting with each other in a very complicated way. This is why transformer models work so well is because they pick up on that. To think that you're going to have a very simple explanation to explain something that requires such a complicated model is really unrealistic. So set that expectations appropriately. I still think these explanations are great for giving end users some idea of what's going on in the model. Very useful for model diagnosis as well. I think in some cases um, we'll see it used by regulators to make sure at least they have some insight of what's going on in the model. Again, this is a kind of a living, breathing document. This is my first kind of piece at this. So please give me feedback. Let me know what you think about this and what else we should keep covering. Thanks.